Today, I'm gonna show you guys how you can create a VGC team from scratch without really knowing anything at all about VGC. All you really have to have is an idea of some Pokemon that you like. Not even an idea of what's good. You just have to be able to pick your favorites out of a list. So, I'm gonna show you guys um, how I ended up with this team and show you guys a bunch of games with it, flowcharts, basically everything that I would do if I was gonna use this strategy to make a team. Now, it's not very often that I do this sort of team building. Uh, normally I like to build like my own teams, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking and gathering data from around the internet and then adapting it. That's the thing, I love it when people use my teams, but I really, really think it is you know, better when people take my teams and then put their own spin on them. I think that's my favorite part of making uh, content. Zote Stoner, thank you so much for the for the sub. I really appreciate it. Let's just hop into it. So I'm going to show you guys right here a Twitter post. It is a post from the website twitter.com. And uh, basically, it's from uh, a buddy of mine, Gary, who has top cut like a bunch of regionals. He's gone to Worlds four times. He's one of the He's probably the only other person that I say is like memeier than myself. Like I will give him the meme pass to being the meme master. He's used like, you know, Z Mimikyu. He's used like Z Z Zeb Stryka. He's used like Mega Pinsir. He's used some really cool teams. So he said he booked his flight to SLC despite having no experience. So this is for people that have no experience. They can follow exactly what I'm going to show you today to make your own really, really cool teams. So... Can someone pass me some sample teams? So what are sample teams? Sample teams are, th he's ask basically just asking for uh, ideas of what people are using right now. So this guy, uh, Donald Smith, linked some teams. And these teams are from the, uh, I think the NPA. And this is like last week's teams on the NPA. And so what I did was, I saw this post from Gary on, tw on Twitter. I liked it because he's my homie. I saw this post here and I went to the NPA doc. I clicked on the doc and that took me right here. And so I saw like a bunch of the teams that people are using right now. Again, I don't even have to know what's good. I just have to kind of relate to a couple of them. So um, if you actually scroll up and down this whole thing, what you're actually going to see is there are a lot of teams that are using this this core of like Zacian, Groudon, Insin, Zard, uh, G, G Max Zard, Gastro, Grim. And if you actually scroll down, you, this team has like two of them. And they both won the week. And you keep you keep scrolling down. You start finding a lot more of them, right? Uh, a lot of players this week in MPA all really used this sort of comp. And they, they almost all won, right? And so uh, I really just decided I'm going to try and see if I can make that core work with my own spin. Also, I'm going to be going to the regional next week. And there's the IC this week. So I, I don't really know how I would play the team yet, but I do know that it's a team that's going to be popular. So the best way to understand what is popular, even if I don't end up using this for a tournament, is to play with it, understand it, and kind of see how it ticks, take it apart from the start, and see if I can then rebuild it with something that I like to play. So that's why how I like to put my own spin on teams. Uh, you know, using it is the best way to understand how to beat something. Let me read this comment. Hey man, just want to tell you that your YouTube vids really piqued my interest in playing competitively, although I'm on Brilliant Diamond, there's no ladder, I really enjoy team building. That's awesome, thank you. Is the regional a whole weekend? It is a whole weekend. So anyways, after this, I uh, looked at all the teams here, and I saw that I really wanted to use this uh, Zacian Groudon one, and put my own spin on it. So after that, uh, I put the team into the team builder, right? And I could see that there's overall pretty good defensive coverage. Uh, you can see that there is a bit of uh, water weakness on this team. You have Zard, uh, Incineroar and Groudon, but that's where Gastron comes into play. What I really like about this team is that there's two big ground types, and I think double ground type is so good, because you can always block your electric attacks. Like, you can always switch in and block electric attacks. Gastron also covers up for water weaknesses, so I think this team actually has pretty good defensive coverage. Um, so anyways, after this, after I looked at their defensive coverage and understood a little bit more about it, the thing I did next was I went to uh, Victory Road, and I just wanted to see some paste and some rental codes for these teams. I saw a team that Joe UX9 did, and I saw a team that, uh, you know, this team's a little bit similar, but a team that Rinya did as well. Ver same code. So I opened up the Poke Pastes, and those are right here. So this is where you're going to start to put your own spin on things. You want to understand why they're doing what they're doing. You can see Joe's Groudon had 28 speed, 148 speed on the Zacian. Um, he had a bit of a bulkier Life Orb Zard. 
And they had like a Koba Venu, which isn't the same as Gastrodon, but you know, this is an older team, so I'm gonna put the Gastrodon in there. And then he had like the Light Clay Grim with the standard moveset and 28 speed, and then a bit of a faster and sense. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take and understand why these work. So I'm gonna plug all these into a damage calculator and see exactly what they get off of their speed calcs, like what they get at plus one and plus two, which is why they're actually put at those numbers, what the Grim gets off that much special D, things like that. I'm gonna do a bunch of research like that. And then after that, um, I'm going to look at Rinya's team and see if there's anything that I really like about his team. He's using a lot more aggressive Zacian. He's using a Vested Groudon. He's using an Iron Ball Grim, a Figgy, and Sin, and then the Leftovers Gastro. And I'm going to use a very similar... I'm going to use a mix of both of these teams when I make my own. So we're going to be able to look at that right here. Let me go inside this building. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to go into my team builder now. I'm going to show you the team that I came up with. So the team that I came up with is like a mix of both of them. It is... Uh, I took Joe's base Groudon spread and I was like, you know what? I like that it has about that same, uh, you don't need full attack. That's basically what I gathered from Joe's. You don't need full attack. So I decided to, I think we take a look at his, I don't think he's white herb. I think he is citrus. So I'm using white herb because I want to be a bully versus Incineroars. I don't want them coming in and intimidating me. And then I kept the fact that he was using Swords Dance, and so I really like the Swords Dance. And then I put 76 points in speed, so after a plus one Airstream boost from a Charizard, I would outspeed Thundies. And that's going to be really important based off how we play this team in the remaining matchups. So it's really, really perfect. Is my Regionals team done already? It's not. I haven't even started it. Um, we're just working on teams for the IC today. So basically, yeah, I took an idea that I saw a couple other players use, and I tweaked it to what I wanted it to do. But I still kept the base idea. And, uh... Zacian here. Um, and this is just my standard Zacian set. I didn't want to be a full speed Zacian. I didn't want. I went for more of a full bulk Zacian. You beat me earlier today with the team. Yeah, we're going to show the game that we actually played in a minute. Um, but I, I like to go for a more bulkier Zacian. And I actually tested cutting player for sub because I saw both of them use sub at different points uh, in a couple Poke Pace. So I decided to test sub. I realized I didn't like it. I like player rough. So um, just because I want better Gastrodon coverage and better Palkia coverage. As for the Zard, you know, saw so Joe ran a bulkier, slower Zard. And uh, Rinya ran a faster Zard. Um, and so I'm going to make a mix of both where I like the fast Zard. And uh, remember, even with like Charizard's fast, um, it won't get one-shotted by a Thunderous, even if they both max. If we both max, it won't get one-shotted by a Thunderous unless they're using Adamant or Life Orb. You can run the calc and find that out. Max does 97%, so you're actually completely fine just running a full-speed Zard here. Um, and I opt to go with the Solar Beam. Again, more Gastro coverage. Uh, I think Gastro is still really good against this team. And, uh, you know, Additional coverage for like Kyogres and things like that with the solar beams, as well as like dealing with Groudons if you have to with the super effective attack. Beanie's also a problem. I don't like dealing with Beanie. Isn't wider Swords Dance greedy on Groudon? I don't think it is. I think it does exactly what I want it to do. Um, also note that the Groudon isn't full attack, so like I need to preserve that plus two. Like if I was just Swords Dance and they intimidated me and I went to plus one, I wouldn't have the damage because I'm not full attack. So I like the wider Swords Dance. Um, but anyways, you can see right here. The Lumberry Zard is what I really like about this team. This is where we're going to start slowly turning uh, the team to do what I want it to do instead of what the others have done to make the team standard. Like, the things that they're doing are what made the team good, standard, meta, and respected. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to force people to respect those options and slightly tweak the team to what I want it to do. And I really thought about this. Like, in the Mirror match, what do they do against Zard with the Mirror? Because this is a popular team, a lot of people are running it. What do they do in the Mirror? They Thunderwave the Zard, right? You use Prankster Thundies to Thunderwave the Zard. You use Prankster Grimms to Thunderwave the Zard. And uh, if you proc the Lumberry, you know, you just waste your Thunderwave, take out that Grim first turn or second turn, they can't do anything. Rum Lumberry for Paragon Sleep. Yeah, I like it better. Also, it protects against Venusaurs and Sleep Powders like that. So it's a little bit better than Safety Goggles. And I really do think it gives us a little bit more defensive options on our Zard. So I really do like that. Uh, as for the Gastrodon, um, I opted to go, instead of like a slower Gastrodon like all the others did, I opted to go with the Gastrodon with actually just four points in speed. They're extra points. Um, the last thing that I did with my EV set that's different um, is that uh, I put all my EVs in here to make it so I wasn't getting diminishing returns on HP. So you can still see I have, if you were to double this number and double this number, it's higher than the HP sat, so I'm not getting diminishing returns. I had 36 points left over. Put that with uh, my nature into that slot so I can actually max an Oko Zashin, so the max Quake. And then I put four points in speed so I can actually outspeed other Gastrodons in case the mirror is a problem, which again, I've already talked about multiple times respecting the Gastrodon mirror. Um, let's see, how I counter Trick Room teams? Uh, well, the last two Mons, these three Mons can beat any Trick Room team. Um, basically, one thing that the Grimms did on all those teams was the Grimms had Spirit Break, Dual Screen, Thunder Wave. And I used a similar set. Uh, some, one of them had Trick with, like, Iron Ball. I don't like Trick Iron Ball. Um, I like Black Glasses Foul Play Grim. 
Like, I like one-shotting Solgaleos. I like one-shotting Calyrex Ices. I like one-shotting Lunalas and Dom Wings and Lugias. I like one-shotting those things. I like them to go down. So this Grim here, it's similar to a couple of those sets. I did use... Uh, another thing that I did was I made all these Pokemon very slightly. You can see my ground has 76 points in speed. My Grim has 36. My Incentive has 100 points in speed. I looked at all of the popular pace that we looked at, and I speed crept those pace. So people are forced to be respecting those speed tiers. We're going to be a little bit faster than them. So if we do fight the Mirror or other people that are expecting us to act at a certain speed, we're going to be a little bit faster in that situation. So, yeah, my Grim will be able to outspeed their Grims with foul play. It's really, really nice. Um, and I, I just think it's so, so good. We also should be making this G-Max. I'm just going to say this should have been G-Max, and this is my fault. So let's do that right now. Especially because we have a Dark Attack. Uh, I didn't need to G-Max the Grim, though, in this set, so it didn't really matter. There we go. So it's G-Max, just to just throw that in there. But yeah, um, 124 Spadef with 204 HP is also living versus a few other choice moves that, you know, you have to deal with with this team as well. So similar to Joe's spread, just a little bit faster in my opinion. But I really do like the Black Glasses Grim. And the only reason you saw it before points in attack, even though you're using foul plays in case you max it. Uh, last but not least is the Incineroar. I really do like this Incineroar. I saw, I think Joe ran the Safety Goggles, and the other one ran a Figgy Berry. I'm just going to go with Citrus because I tend to use uh, Incineroar as a pivot to go to uh, alleviate pressure from like, uh, what is that? Shadow Riders, so I like the Citrus on it, um, but I also like the fact that we're even faster than a 92 base Incineroar, and we have Throat Chop, so we can actually Throat Chop other Incineroars to stop their parting shot. So it's a really, really cool set, and uh, I, I do like this team. So after doing all this, um, I thought about how I would play the team. I wanted to go heavy into Zard, set dots, and uh, what I really like is if I go Zard Groudon, right? Groudon activates the Zard's solar power. We can do big damage, and... The one thing that Zard's really, really weak against are things like rock attacks and electric attacks. You could switch out the Zard for the Gastro, and then they can't use electric attacks on anything. It's really, really cool. You can also switch out the Zard for Zacian to block a Wormwind into that slot, so they can't Wormwind into our Groudon unless they actually want to target the Groudon, which they shouldn't target the Groudon. And so there's so many unique situations um, where this team actually just wins the game on like the first two turns that you wouldn't really think about. It forces your opponent into very specific lead options that we're going to be able to punish. And again... I am going to be playing this team for the first time. I'm going to show you guys my first 10 games with the team. And I would recommend whenever you're learning how to play a team, play it like 10 times a day and then like review those notes and see what you can clean up. You're actually going to see things, mistakes that I make in the first few games. I'm going to clean those up and be a much better player by the end of these 10 games. So we're going to hop into those in just a sec. Would safe goggles be an option instead of a variance? And it would, but like, what do you need goggles for? Like, Think about what you need goggles for. That's the thing. Is like, do you need goggles to beat Venusaur? I'm not using Incineroar to beat Venusaur. I have a Charizard that can do that, right? I have a Groudon that can do okay against Venusaur. I can set screens. I can Thunder Wave it. So you don't really need safety goggles on Incin in this squad the way I've built it. What was the Groudon spread? It's over here. Don't you want HP and Sin at 200? That way you take the most advantage from Citrus Berry? It doesn't really matter. It, I mean, it could matter, I guess, but like, it's not the big deal. It's not like, I'd be wasting, not wasting points, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I guess maybe you, they could go to 200, but it's okay. But anyways, let's uh, let's hop into the games after I get a sip of coffee. What do you guys think so far? What do you guys think of the team so far? SD Groudon. Yeah, I like the SD Groudon. It's really, really nice. Yo, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for all the follows. I really do, I really do appreciate it. That says we're wasting four points here. Put that there. <laughs> Anyways, let's hop into the games. Looks like a very cool twist on a Stanley Wigan team. I think it's cool. So this is my first game with the team. This is the first game that I played. And uh, I'm going up against Gastros, which I respect. Venusaur's, which I respect. Ho-Oh is a bit of a problem. Um, but that's one of the reasons why we have Rock Slide on our Groudon. So Ho-Oh would be a really, really big problem if we didn't have Rock Slide Groudon. So in this matchup, the one thing you want to do is not lose your Groudon before you have a chance to KO that Ho-Oh. So we're just going to start the game off. And uh, we'll talk. We'll be pausing it and breaking down the moves that I need to be doing each turn, and just talking about the different options. Remember, our Zard does have a Lumberry, so things like Thunder Wave Grim, Thunder Wave Prankster Torn, or sorry, Thunderous, uh, Yawns from Gastros, Sleep Powders from Venusaurs, they don't do shit to our Zard. So Zard's a great lead here to pick off all of these Pokemon and make it so their Ho Oh has to one v one our Groudon, which is the idea when we, uh, you know, built the team. So we're deciding to lead Zard Groudon. Really, really good lead here. Right? And another cool thing is everyone's like, that's a, why were you using, um, you know, 
wider brow on. Obviously, the team doesn't have an Intimidator. Imagine if that Grimmsnarl or, like, something else was, uh, like an Intimidator. This is why I like doing this, because I like leading with the Groudon, because they should be leading and then Sin to, you know, block the damage from the Zard Wildfire, intimidate the Groudon, intimidate the Zacian, fake out the Zacian, and Sin's a great lead versus this team. But when you lead with the Groudon, you wider them, they have to, like, parting shot or switch, which means it's a free SD if you want it. Or you can just max KO the Sin with a Quake, or you can just Plebades and actually KO them. So you're in such a good situation with the wider, where you are immediately trying to win the game on the first turn. So like I said, in this situation, the best move option that I actually think there's two or three things you can do. If you expect them to airstream, you don't airstream. You pop the wildfire. And I think in this game, I do wildfire the thunderous. I should have wildfired the grim because that would have made it so it would stop like two thunder waves and make sure they could only get one screen off. Um, so I should have hit the grim with the wildfire. I think I do hit the thundy. Um, but the Groudon gets a free SD here in almost every situation. If you're setting a screen, I still get a free SD. If you're setting a Thunder Wave and a Zard, I get a free SD. And again, you can't KO my Zard with that Thundy unless you're either Adamant, which means I would outspeed you, or your Life Orb, which is very uncommon. And if, even if you are, even if you can KO me here, I then just max my, not max my Groudon, but like you can't KO my Groudon next turn. So I just go with a, th with a Rock Slide. So we're completely fine in the situation. So we're just going to start it off. And so you see they're maxing first. So it is Max Defiant Thundy, right? And uh, they go for a trick. So they're going to trick an Iron Ball into me, which is the standard way to play Grim, I would say. I don't really care about that. Um, it's not the end of the world here. And we see them Airstream my Zard. Doesn't do that much. They're not Life Orb, but they get a plus one speed boost. And so you can see we go for a Wildfire. Again, I should have just hit the Grim, I think. I think realistically, looking back at this, hitting Grim would have been better because it would have been able to take it off the board. Um, yo, thank you for the sub. 11 months. Can we put some subs up for this? Can we put some subs up? I'll put some subs up. Let's put some subs up. Where are the sub emotes? Wham, bam, bam. Big subs up. Thank you, my friend. Really do appreciate that. 11 months. I, I can't believe the support. Thank you. But anyways, yeah, you see, I hit the Thundy, and it's going to set the Wildfire, which is going to be super good on this team. It's going to make them want to bring their hoe out earlier. Remember, I got a Swords Dance off, and I didn't show Rock Slide yet. That's the thing. I have not shown the Rock Slide unless I have to. So, we just go for the play here. Um, Solar Power makes me tick. And in this situation, right... You have a max Thundy. It has a plus one speed, but it doesn't have like a life orb, so I'm not really afraid of it. You can't do anything to my Groudon. It's still at full. I'm literally a Groudon. You can kill my Zard this turn, but then you lose both your Mons to the Rock Slide plus Wildfire Dot. So if you want to set Reflect and kill my Charizard, I'm still killing your Thundy, which means I still have Rock Slide to kill your Ho-Oh. So I'm in a really good spot here no matter what they do. So let's just see what they do. They go for the Reflect, they go for the Airstream, and the Groudon this time, a little bit of damage, they're attacking the right target, because they have to get that guy off the board, so, uh, you know, Ho-Oh can actually do some stuff. But then this is going to let me go for the Rock Slide, KO the Thundee, chip the Grim, and then we're also going to get an Airstream here now. I'm Airstreaming with my Zard, because we already know that we have enough damage to KO the Grim with anything, and we want to give a plus one boost to our Groudon so we can outspeed the Ho-Oh. They just scoop right there, you know why? Because they had a Ho-Oh in the back, right? So it's easy peasy. Even if they were to send out a Groudon, right? Groudon, Ho -Oh, I'd still be fine. I'd protect Groudon, fodder the Zard. They'd take a tick of the Wildfire tick. I'd send out Zacian in the back, or like, uh, I think in Sin or Grim or whatever I had in the back and basically win the game. So really, really good first game. I could have even played cleaner. So that's the cool thing about reviewing your replays. I understood, and I'm going to take this going into future games and knowing that like KOing the Grim is probably a better play because I could have denied them getting that Reflect off in the first place. Uh, so anyways, but yeah, we take those first wins, right? Let's go into the next game. Next game is going to be versus Zern Togekiss. I think Togekiss is such an underrated pick right now. And uh, I just like their team. Zern Groudon, old school, really good stuff. This is where we see the Thundee and Sin, right? Really, really standard stuff that's good versus our team. We're tunneling them into wanting to bring those type of Pokemon so we can punish them with our leads. It's really good stuff. Do I do this for BDSP? I have done them for BDSP. So let's just start into, into it. So we see Charizard and Grimmsnarl this time. So a little bit different. Um, the reason why, why would we go Charizard Grimmsnarl instead of Charizard Groudon? Well, we can let their Groudon just lead and set the sun. But the cool thing about going with the Grimmsnarl here is I can go for light screens if I'm really afraid of like a special attack. I can Thunder Wave a Zern, so I can just let them Geomancy and Thunder Wave them. I can go for a Reflect. If they want to lead something like this, I can go with a big Reflect. And uh, I can also just go for a big Black Glasses boosted Foul Play if you actually were to Swords Dance with your Groudon this turn, which I would think that you might do. Like, you could probably go for like an Airstream into my Zard and Swords Dance, which is what I would do if I were the opponent. Uh, we can just one-shot their Groudon with Foul Play before they max. Really, really cool play. So, uh, and remember, their Thundee can't one-shot our Zard unless it's built like Life Orb or Adamant. So that's just not normal. So let's we'll see what we do here. 
So I just max the Zard. Got no problem maxing the Zard. Go for the Thunder Wave. What, what did I say about Thunder? What, what did I talk about? This whole team is made to tunnel them into doing those things. You pop the Thunder Wave. I pop the Lumberry. I Wildfire Groudon. If I was modest, I, that might have still been a low roll. We don't get the KO. It is never lucky. Um, they missed the Stone Edge. That is lucky. But even if it didn't, um, we doubled into that slot and there was a Wildfire Dot. So even worst case scenario, we would have been trading like our Zard if they hit that for um, their Restricted. And if they don't have their Restricted, they have to send out a Zern here. Uh, we sent out our Groudon. We have Grim Groudon versus like like Defiant or like Prankster, Thundee, and Zern. We'd still win. Um, so yeah, we do be taking those. It's still winning. And uh, yeah, the Thunder Wave into the Lumberry tech. That's what we worked on. That's the biggest deviation that we made and just went on turn one, basically. It was cool that we, they missed the Stone Edge, though. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was cool they missed the Stone Edge. But we also did Foul Play double up into it. And we also probably just low rolled the Wildfire. It's Sun Boosted, um, Solar Power Boosted. Um, yeah, we just take those. So we're going to this one now. And you can see this one. Very, very weird team. Um, also, I want to say that I'm playing on my main account. Um, I, I, I reset the main down to, like, uh, the bottom. But, like, I'm playing on the main, so these people know that they're playing against me, which is something that I do definitely struggle with. So that's one of the reasons why we're practicing this right now. So I can, you know, play on my main accounts just to, just to play a little bit differently against people that know they're playing against me. But it's really cool to see the wheezing there. Raichu is a bit of a problem, but again, we have the Lumberry Zart. I do not care if you want to nuzzle me. I, I, I really, really don't. And again, there's that in Sin. Uh, really could be a little bit of an issue because I have Gastron Groudon, but Lugia should not be that hard to deal with. So just start it off. And we see the Weezing, very cool Mon, and Raichu. That's a very, very passive lead from our opponent. Like, they have potential for fake outs, and something is like a fake out sub, fake out toxic, fake out Will O Wisp. I don't really care. Um, we decided to leave with the Insin here just because Insin is so good versus Rilla. Remember, we can um, throat chop other Insins, and since we have a faster Insin, we always know that we can lead Insin versus other Insins and just fake out them if we need to. Uh, it's also great versus Lugia. It's good enough versus Weezing. It's great versus Sashin. So, this is one of the few matchups where like Insin is a really, really good Mon just because their team is a little bit too reactive. Uh, even like me using a reactive Pokemon, I'm able to take advantage of it. So they go for a double switch here. Watch what I do here. I don't click the, uh, I don't click parting shot. Now, why would you say like, why wouldn't you parting shot? I really didn't want to go for like a fake out into the Raichu into getting Encore next turn, or even just clicking a parting shot into the Raichu, soaking a fake out and getting something happening to my Incin. I need that Incin to be at full so we can Momo in the Lugia later. So I just went for the hard switch because I didn't want to get protect baited or anything weird happened. Um, and it's actually, it's not better that I did, but, uh, it doesn't really matter. We got a free switch in the ground, and I didn't show my parting shot, which means they might still be respecting the fact that my Incin could be vested for later on in the matchup. But you see, we max in our Zard here, and, uh, yeah, they make a really good play. Um, they make a really good play. Uh, they switch in the Incin. Our Wildfire is not going to do that much. Uh, it's only hitting the Weezing right now, so it's only half effective. Um, and the Incin you saw took a ton of damage from that, but can you see how ahead we are? Weezing and Sin do not do that well against Groudon. That switch in the Groudon was amazing. How come you're testing on Showdown? I remember you saying it wasn't the best to do in an older video. You shouldn't be using Showdown to test. Like, you shouldn't be using Showdown to test, but you have to use Showdown to understand your leads. Like, you have to use... You ha you don't, like, go into a super long Showdown testing series, but you have to, like, understand how your team works first, and the best way to do that is to play on Showdown. So this isn't really, like, a... a huge grind session this is something that just took me like 20 minutes anyways um we have an amazing pin here like this is a really good pin i don't really care what you do with the wheezing i think they go for uh poison gas that's what it is poison gas wheezing which is actually really really cool tech poison the groudon lumberry zard's fine but you can see in the situation like i really don't care your your team is just way too reactive you're gonna be using things like lugia raichu and sim like i'm not gonna just let you do that i'm gonna get an uh, airstream boost on my Groudon. I'm gonna get airstream boost on my Zard. I don't care what you send out next. Uh, this next turn is actually really funny. Look at this. They maxed the Raichu. <laughs> and, like, we really don't even care. We, it looks like it's a vested Raichu. That's the only way you don't die there. And, uh, we're just super fine. We SD in their face. Don't really have to let the Lugia do anything. And you can see we're just completely fine in this situation. So, everyone's taken out. We still have to go after the Raichu in this slot just because we don't want Raichu doing something weird to Groudon, like max striking it or something. Uh, we want Groudon to always be able to outspeed the Lugia, so then we can just kill it right here. So, easy game still. Um, they played this a little bit too reactive, and what I really liked about this situation is that, like, we're able to be a bully and push that pressure and have, like, auto-win scenarios versus people who I would deem were better than. And so that's what I really do like about this team. 
I know this is basically your job, but when is the last time you genuinely enjoyed a Pokemon game? Um, like a poke, like a game, like actually playing the game, the 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 game, like getting the badges. Probably Gen three. So like two thousand and late. I don't know what what year was that? Two thousand four, two thousand three. What do you mean lose with honor? What do you mean? They did. I killed all their Pokemon. They didn't leave. I won. I killed all their Pokemon. But yeah, um, I guess in terms of like enjoying like team building and stuff, Gen 4. Gen 4 was probably the last time. Maybe Gen 5. Um, probably maybe if, if you want to, if you want me to, I, I think Gen 5 probably. Gen 5 is a good way to look at it. Yeah. Gen 5. Next game. So you can see this time another Ho-Oh, which means I have to preserve that Groudon. Um, yeah, the, the last time I enjoyed a, a Pokemon game was probably Gen 3. Gen 3 is also my favorite Gen. Um, so, yeah, I like Gen 3. But I also didn't really care for the Mega Ruby Sapphire remakes, which is kind of weird. Anyways, next game. Um, we see Ho-Oh Yveltal. We have to preserve that uh, Groudon so we can hit that Ho-Oh with Rock Slide. Um, Gastron's a big problem. Um, we do have our own Gastron to check it, but I definitely respect Gastron because Gastron can just max... Gastron can get out of control, which is one of the reasons why we have, like, Solar Beam Zard. Uh, we have, like, Zacian's not that great for his Gastro. But um, we have options to deal with it, but, like, we don't want to be stuck using, like, Incense Grims and being in a board state where we can't break Gastrodon. What do you suggest is the best way to test one's team for regionals events with just friends in cart or player vote on showdown? I do it with friends in best of three scenarios. So just hit up people on Twitter and say, hey, you got time for a best of three? And that's how you do it. Um, that's, the best w that's the best way to do it. But in this situation, let's see. We, uh, let's also talk about a couple things. So they have double water types in Rotom Wash Gastro, which means if we wanted to bring our Gastro, we could. But Gastro, while it's okay versus uh, Ho Oh, it's not that great versus Yveltal, in my opinion. It's okay versus Grim. It's okay versus Insin. So I don't remember if I bring Gastro in this game, but it would be a good bring this game if I wanted to try and force it. So we see Grim Gastro, right? And we we Insin Groudon. And so the reason we're waiting in Sin Groudon instead of something like Zard Groudon is that we don't really want to set the wildfire because they already have two, um, they have two fire types. Now, I think I still have Zard, I think I actually have Zard Zashin in the back in this game because uh, I know that I want to solar beam that, that Gastrodon with my Zard, but uh, we just don't need to weave with Zard. It's not important. It's, this is definitely a max Groudon game. And so remember, we have so many cool options here. We're using a very, very fast in Sin. So we could go fake out into the Grim and Swords Dance um, we can also fake out the Gastrodon, let the Grim set his reflex sword stance there so this Gastron can't yawn us, which I think is the only reason you'd weed Gastron in the situation is for yawn. So, in this situation, we get a great Intimidate up. And uh, they switch out for Rotom to block the fake out. We don't care. Um, we fake out there. We sword stance. And so, in this situation, we're in a good spot. Also note that you can't go for a water attack with your Gastron on the board. I don't know if they know this, but, like, I'm not afraid of, like, any of your mons right now. Um, we got an SD... Your Gastron get, didn't get its yawn off, which I know it was going for. So we're in an absolutely amazing spot here. So I'm just going to max the Groudon. I'm just going to take out the Gastro. They protect our... I don't have to care about that Pokemon, like, at all. I thought they were just going to switch it out. So I think I parting shot your... So yeah, I just went for the parting shot. And uh, they send a Grim out. I don't really care what you do. So you can go for your Water Attack now. They go for their Reflect. We Quake the Grim. Almost KO it. They go for a Geyser in the Incin. We have the plus one Spedef boost, and it was sunny, so we're not dead. We go for a Parting Shot into the Rotom. That's absolutely amazing. We come with the Zard. I didn't... I'm not going to say I'm sad about that, but, like, it is what it is. We have to basically fodder for the next couple turns. We're just going to wait out the Rotom's max turn so we can KO it with Zashi, and that's basically where we're looking here. We go for a Foul Play. It's not going to do as much because we were in our max mode, and so now we do need to take out the Grim with something. Um, you'll basically see how we do this. They go for a Max Guard, which is surprising. They go for a Thunder Wave and Azashian, which is fine. This is the last game that I tested with Sub. Again, this was like not having Player Rough made this a lot harder than I wanted it to be, um, just to beat these water types. So there's the Ho-Oh. We finally got to the Ho-Oh, right? We're just trying to wait out some of these Reflex. Um, they get a Nasty Plot off. That's completely fine. I don't really care. We just need a little bit of damage on Rotom, and then we can come in hot and win the game. So we go for the Rock Slide. Big Rock Slide on the Ho-Oh. We do be taking those. Uh, we goose our ground into a hydro pump crit never lucky and then basically i think they just scoop uh because we still have two mons in the back we have zard and zashian so this is the last game that i tested with sub zashian i was like i didn't need the sub it didn't really do me any favors and just not having the additional coverage that i wanted made it a lot harder so this is why i took sub off just for play rough but i do think that this game was a good one uh, i got i tested the things i wanted to test and again i won the team preview which is what we've done every single time
So let's uh, let's drink some coffee. <laughs> Let me just get my uh, my bearings back here. Ah, all right, we're about halfway through. This team. Oh, this was a crazy game. I remember this one. Okay, I think I think this. Yeah, this is a this is a cool game. So Lele Ogre. I think Lele is like secret OP. Um, it's not, it's obviously not restricted, but it's, it's really good. It gets like ally switch. It's a great maximum. It's, it's a 95 base speed. So it outspeeds all the base 90s. So Reshiram, Zekrom's, Kyogre's, Groudon's, all those things. Uh, Lele outspeeds and can be a big bully. It's always weird when you see Lele with whims and like Kyogre, Solgaleo can be a little bit hard to deal with, especially for like Zacian, if, uh, I don't have the right mons. So this is where the matchups are going to start getting a little bit harder, but just watch how we deal with this here. So we're going to lead up with Grim, which is not that great for Sleleys, and they do lead the Leleys. So in this regard, um, the cool thing about this is if they wanted to go for like a big KO in or a run, they're going to have to bring that Rilla in. If they have to bring in the Rilla, they take away the terrain, I'm able to go for Thunder Waves. Uh, this lead also just lets us go, if you look at their team, other than the Grim and the Rilla to the extent, Lele, Kyogre, Rotom, those are all big special attackers. I just want that fade away. Um, I want the fade away uh light screen so i can actually win with my grout on that's kind of the plan coffee's do bitter for me plus last time i had a sip of it the morning i was shaking till lunch you know you just gotta you gotta you gotta slam more coffee so i could overdose on caffeine and not even like notice but let's go i think i just go for a light screen and a yawn um and so they switch in the roller boom awesome we do be taking those and then you max the lele now there's a couple cool things that happen here first of all i can't believe that ko'd me it tells me you have some sort of damage modifier uh there's the life orb you know it, it i would have seen that anyways we go for the yawn you can still yawn people um you can make them drowsy in this in the the star terrain but you can't um they won't go to sleep so if he just leaves this roll up here it won't go to sleep um omax dropping the sub 31 months big 31 months we do be taking those can i put some subs up Put some subs up. We do be taking those. Thank you, my friend. Holy moly. You'll love to see that. Appreciate the subs. At tier two as well. Holy moly. The golden subs. Anyways, in this situation, we are in a bad spot. They have a Rilla that now pins our Groudon and our Gastrodon. And they have an Ogre in the back with a Max Lele shoving our face in. And there's no way for us to change the terrain. None of these mons change terrain. Groudon can't. Gastrodon can't. So, it's not even like we're really going to be able to put that Rilla to sleep. So, we're really, really behind in the situation. So this is where I've been, this is the first test that I'm gonna have in getting myself out of a bad situation where the first turn doesn't really go according to plan for me. But uh, that, I do still have outs. Uh, the outs that I have is the cool thing about Gastron is, is Gastron heavily tunnels your opponents into respecting it. You need to get this Gastron off so your Ogre can work correctly. Ogre can beat Groudon, it, that'll happen eventually. If you just bring your ogre back in, it resets the weather. It's in a good spot. But Gastrodon's a problem, so I know you want to deal with it. So, in this situation, we do this. We switch out for Zacian. It's a great switch in there. It blocks psychic attacks. It blocks fairy attacks. It blocks grass attacks. It's a great switch. I don't have to take any damage through protects or anything like that. They go for the Starfall. You won't kill the Groudon because they have the light screen up. We know that that grass guy's going into that slot. So, we've alleviated two of the max turns. On the third turn... Or, sorry, not the third turn. Yeah, um... Yeah, on the end of that turn, what is it? Yeah, Groudon. Just make sure. Yeah, Gastron. Groudon swords danced at the end of that turn. So, uh, not only did we not lose our Gastro, but we got a SD off with our Groudon. And that's really, really good. Remember, there's no grassy terrain. And in this situation, that Lele's still on its big max turn, a last max turn, but now we have a winning board state. Lele is a little bit pinned. It has to either max guard or protect. And Rilla, while I can't one shot Rilla with my Zacian, Rilla is slower than my Groudon because it doesn't have its terrain. So, what we do here is we max our Groudon because we want that deeps. The Lele's max guarding, I, I did that just to avoid the crit. Um, remember, uh, the last Starfall did 53% That would have KO'd me anyways, so we had to max Groudon there. Otherwise, we would have died to the Lele if they decided to leave it in. So, we Behemoth Blade almost gets the KO, and the U-turn. Watch this. Watch this. Peace, Ogre. Yeet, delete, repeat that out of here so now now you're out of max turns you have your rilla coming back in to give terrain back but i can just go uh protect my groudon ko it ko your lele i win the game right win the game you i forced them to over respect gastro for like one turn and it got me out of a huge problematic pin so really really cool stuff very patient play uh in my on my half i think very very good play and uh even if they would have sent it like solgaleo like solgaleo can't hang with this you know what i mean 
Slow Glow just can't hang because you wasted your max on the Lele. So, and you needed to max the Lele to kill the Grim. So, like, I don't even think that was wrong. They did a pretty good play. It's just that I outplayed them to, to win the game. So, pretty good stuff. Next game. So, this game here. Um, Zashi and Ogre. Not that great a matchup, but one cool thing is that we have the double electric, sorry, double ground board. So if you want to go for like big max lightnings with like physical lucky, special lucky, or even torn, I don't really care. And so, or thundy, I always call them torns. But you can see if they want to go thunder wave with torn or thunder wave with grim, we have that lum zard. And they only have one fire type in sin. And if we weed zard crowd on, I don't remember if that's what we do this game. Um... There's no way that the Incin actually can do anything to the Groudon because we just wider and then we win the game. So we start this one off. There's the Grim. There's the Thundee. Look at it. Look at this happen. Look at this happen. This is exactly what we want. They max the Thundee. We max the Zard. Survey says Thunder Wave. Ain't never even heard of it, Chief. Where are you looking? You ain't looking any more important. You go for the max lightning. So it crit. You have to get the crit there. You have to. You doubled up into my Zark. You had to crit. Like, the way that's calced. Um, and, and they're orbed. So, that could have still low rolled to not kill me. But, we... That sucks, right? That does suck. But it's not over yet. Zashian comes in. Now, look how we deal with this. We go for Protect. Because we don't want to eat the Thunder Wave. Um, they go for the Reflect. They go for an Airstream. Not the end of the world. We're still okay. Right? We're still in a good enough position. Because Thundee's in a terrible Maximon. We just go for big damage on Grim. So, next turn we can finish it off. We switch in for Gastro to block the big damage. They go for dual screens. They knuck the Gastro. And the fact that we have a Gastro is still really, really nice. Um, we did that just because they couldn't set the uh, Electrain. That's a second Swords Dance, by the way. Second SD. Now you're out of max turns. Now what do you do? Like, what do you do? You're, you're out of max turns. You could go hard in that Groudon. But what's it going to get you, right? The biggest Rock Slide. And now, like, you can go Gastrodon... You can go Gastrodon Kyogre if you have, or Gastrodon, uh, Kyogre Zashin if you have it, but like, it's, a, it's also Gastro, or sorry, Kyogre and Sin. But like, what do you do versus Gastrodon? Like, you have absolutely nothing. We have to wait up the electric terrain. Like, yeah. What's your predicted sleeper mon in the IC? I don't have one. I don't, I don't have one. I don't think there's going to be like a sleeper mon. But yeah, there's no way they break the Gastro in this situation. And this was a turn one where we got like, Never lucky matchup into the Life Orb Thunderous and crit turn one. Lost our max on the first turn. And there's still nothing they can realistically do here. They they can't break the Gastro. So we just win. Big nap time for Kyogre. And we just go after these screens. We even make a good play here at the end of this. Watch what happens. So, um, so we're for the Scald here. Doesn't get the kill. Lives at 1%. Literally never lucky. So I'm like, I need to protect one more time with Zashian in case we get the one turn sleep on Ogre. You know we'd be getting one turn sleeps on Ogre. You know we're never lucky. You know I don't want to lose. So we take out the Incin. And uh, we're only doing that so they can't go like protect Ogre the turn after we send out Groudon and like go for some like Blair Blitz crit and, and anything else. So we go for this. I didn't, the foul, I didn't know that foul, that player would do that much. So like I didn't actually have to go for a Yon. I could have went for an Earth Power, but it is what it is. And we'll take the win. In a, in a game where we basically lost the game on the first turn, we still didn't even lose the game on the first turn because we brought the right four and played correctly. So really, really good game. Like, great game. I think this is absolutely amazing, like, come back from behind. I haven't even lost a single game. I, I've literally shown you every game that I've played. Uh, no losses yet. I think we're, like, 6-0 and or something. This game, Palkia Zashian with Grim with Zap. And so I think this is still a good situation for us to test Zard. Zard has a higher special D than defense, so I still think we're okay versus that. We'd also be forcing speed ties. Um, in this game, though, um, you're talking about showing people why they shouldn't quit. This guy just scoops, I think. He just dips right off the start. But I still want to say, I still included this because it shows, like, sometimes this just happens. Um, in this matchup, though, I do think that, like, Zard would have been really good. If we set the GMAX fire dot... Uh, we're basically going to be able to win the game because they don't have any other mons. They don't have any fire mons. And I'm not really afraid of, like, Lando. I'm not really afraid of Zap. Uh, I'll be able to just sword dance over those things over time. And I think I'd be able to win. So I also think, like, Incin, uh, Grimstarl, Gastro, they're all really, really good. And the fact that I put Palkia back on my Zashim, then I had really good coverage moves for things like Zap, Grim, and the Palkia. So I'm not going to fault them for not wanting to play this. But I will say that we do be taking those. Um, I wish they would have played, but it is what it is. 
So this person, this person it knew who I was. Um, they're like, whoa, is this, that's a plus one? I was like, yeah. And they have a cool team. Um, I think that the only misplay that they're going to make this game, does Orb Max Lightning Thunday not KO Zarb without crit? It, I'll show you the calc. Um, so here's the Charizard Thunday matchup. Um, if you take the, I think the Life Orb makes it so you might get the KO. You probably get the KO. Yeah, 107. So you, we, did, we do be dead. Um, but they get the crit anyway, so it didn't matter. And they were orbed, right? So it is what it is. But if you take out the orb, you know, if you take the orb out, it doesn't KO, right? Huh? Right there. So you can see it does 96.1 as the, the total. So we're still fine in that situation. But anyways, this guy knew who I was. Um, and their only mistake is I think they trick room to turn late. Uh, you'll see what happens here. I think they got caught up in the fact they were playing against me. We'll, we'll talk about it. So they lead Necrozma Entity. And so I decided to go with something. Someone was asking what my answer for Trick Room teams are. Trick Room teams can't really break this board. You have screens. Uh, you have Thunder Wave if you need it. You have big, black glasses, stabbed foul play. And in Sync and Party Shot, you can fake out not in terrain. Uh, throat Chop, you could be a good Maxmon. Really, really good stuff on this guy. Uh, and obviously, this is going to be a Meteor Beam dom wings like obviously it's meteor beam everyone knows that i think the cool play would be here to go like follow me trick room and then start meteor beaming uh but we'll see how they want to handle it i think they just go for the meteor beam turn one which is not the right play in my opinion so we just go for a light screen because i'm i know i'm respecting the turn one meteor beam even though uh like they should be trick rooming right here we almost ko the entity right um, I think they had Sash, yeah. And they go for the Meteor Beam. It doesn't get the KO because we're built bulky enough to not die after the Light Screen. So in this situation, we just go for the Throat Chop Foul Play. I was, I thought the Foul Play would do more, um, but it does have like the Prism Armor. So in this situation, I send the Grout on here. I don't think this is a terrible position for me. They switch out uh, the Dawn Wings to save it for Incin, get a good Intimidate. We pop a Reflect here. We lose the Incin, but now we have dual screens up for the remainder of the game, and we have big Foul Play energy with our own Grout on. Like, this is such a good situation here. They max Groudon, we max Groudon. They're going to be slower than us because they're made for Trick Room, but you can tell the screens are going to really, really help us this game. Uh, we go for a foul play in that slot. We actually just didn't want to miss... Uh, we did not want to miss any of the moves. We wanted to KO that in Sin. This is where they. This is where the wider comes into play. Do you see how good this is? Like, I want to talk about this. When this was the board, right? Right? Like, so this was the board. And I switch in my Groudon after the Incin, right? So once the game got to right here, I knew that I'd won. You only have three turns left of your Trick Room. If I max this guy, first of all, you can't KO my Grim. If I max this, I can KO that. If you want to fake out me, I'm, I'm still going to win. I'm not gonna, I don't need to Swords Dance. I will KO you right now with the uh, Precipice Blades. If you switch in Dom Wings, you're going to lose that too, right? That's what, which is what they do. Then they have to send back out the Incin. The Incin will take... Uh, the Intimidate, it won't work. I'll then KO the Incin. I then pop a Double Protect the turn after we lose our Grim, and then we one-shot the Groudon. So I already knew that I had won the game right here. There was nothing that they could do. We had already seen all their Mons. There's nothing that they could do in that situation to really get them out of it. Unless they wanted to, like, ST their Groudon and not KO my Grim. And if they SD'd the Groudon without maxing it, Grim would have one-shotted them with foul play. So it was a win-win in, like, every situation. Pretty much every situation. Does Black Glasses Grim work against Kyrex? Yep. They're dead. How does Charizard deal with Thundee if it gets one-shotted by Life Orb Max Lightning? Their, Thundees don't run Life Orb anymore. That's the thing. If you run Life Orb Thundee, you lose to Groudon. That's the, the way that works. We already showed a game where that happened. Like, we just got done showing that game. This guy's Amoongus maybe a little more pressure on your Groudon. Yeah, but the thing is, he doesn't have Amoongus. Like, that's the thing. There's no Amoongus. Like, we saw all four Mons. That's why I said on turn three or four, I'm like, we already won. We already saw four of his Mons. There's no way that you get out of this. They even had the Fabled Protect and Sin. Like, they didn't even do anything bad. It's just, I think my team has a good matchup versus this. Like, we allowed them to get up Trick Room. We played defensively at the start, set up dual screens, and just won slowly at the end. So, yeah, most Thundies are Assault Vest or Safety Goggles, I would say. Um, Life Orb Thundee is very uncommon at this point in the meta. I still like Life Orb Thundee, but it's pretty uncommon. But we do be taking those. All right. And so we're 8-0 and oh with this team. We're 8-0. And, oh. and we're going to be Zek. Of course, we're 8 no. We got to go up against my demon. And I respect special Zekrom. I do. I respect it. I'll over respect special Zekrom. But there is one way. So, this is something. Uh, this is where I'm going to show you guys how to never let me win a game again. Are you guys ready? <laughs> you guys ready to never lose a game to Zekrom ever again? Because as a Zekrom player, 
that uses the Kunfei Zekrom, there are some annoying ass teams to play against. And if the smart players play smartly, if you're, got, if you're Zekrom, you ain't got a ghost of a chance. So I'll show you how to shit on Zekrom right now. You use Gastrodon. So you eat Zard, Gastro. There's a reason we weed Zard. Obviously, we would like to hit a Wildfire to something, but if we're baiting them into weeding like Zek or Leki, uh, this is just good for us. Doesn't really matter what they weed. We weed Ogre. This is fine. Like that board, that board, unless they're Power Whip Grim, it ain't doing shit to this Gastrodon. We do not care what they do. So this is what we do. So we just go for Protect because we don't want to die. We're also looking for like Scary Face, Thunder Wave, stuff like that. They go for a Spout. I'll take that's plus one. We go for the Big Yawn, right? So they're yawned, and that's fine. We switch into our ground on this turn. If you want to stay in water spout me, I just set the sun. We know Zekrom's coming in. We know this. This is easy. So they're going to white screen. We're going to yawn the Grim. So in this situation here, <laughs> right, I'm just putting yawn on everybody. You ain't got shit to do with that Zekrom. <laughs> like, he has nothing to do. Um, I think actually in this turn, I think this guy uh, auto selects and then runs. Because um, what do you do, right? If I were to switch out Groudon for Zashim, which is what I actually clicked, I think, you can't even worm win the Groudon. And I get a yawn up into your Zek, and like, it's just, it's just, actually, no, I, I don't switch in Zashim. I switch in Zashim next turn, I think. But look how Pindy is. Like, there's big, big ground types just make Zekrom sad. Big, big ground types with like sleep inducing moves. It's so hard to make Zek work when people play like this. Yeah, he auto selected there. You see, he, um, and I got a sword stance off. I didn't have to do shit. He literally just auto selected into like white screen voltage, which was his first two moves. Cause like he, he actually ran out of time. He didn't like weep. He just ran out of time and then he left. So we do be taking those. And then the last game, the last game that we play is against Zerndon with Umbreon. This is another person that you're going to see in the chat that knows me. I think they're in chat right now. Madness is here right now. So this is the last game that I played. Um, they played this really, really well. And I got a really lucky first turn. But if let's just take a look at like what our team's supposed to do against this. Um, against things like Venusaur with Sleep Powders, against like Thunder Waves from potential Thundies, um, like Prankster Thundies, even against things like Bulk, Umbreon, Groudon, like Zard's good. If we if we set our Wildfire in an Airstream, we're probably going to be fine. We have the Mons to correctly deal with Xerneas too if we need it. I wouldn't really want to bring Xerneas first this if I were a Xerneas player. So we start this off. Like I said, they're they're talking to me right now. So this is a good situation. We've gone Zard Ground in most of our games. And so in this situation, again, they have to have like the, they have to be the big Thundy with like a life orb to even do anything. Is your Gastro Protect Recover? It's Protect because you need it to protect after the Yawn. You don't use Recover. Lefties are what gets your health back. So big Thundy, big Zard. Again, this is completely fine. I've noticed that most of them airstream me anyways. It just doesn't KO at all. And you can see right here, we're actually gonna get lucky. We get a crit on the Wildfire, which like, I'll take those. Like, I will take those. That's the first real iteration of, like, luck I think I've gotten in these games. So I'll take it. Um, you have the Airstream boost. We have to go for the Max Guard. They go for a Leaf Storm into the Groudon. Holy moly. Doesn't get the KO, though, because we're literally built different. And then we just go for a Protect Rock Slide. Good damage on Thundee. Wildfire's ticking. We're in a great spot here. Uh, you can go for the double KO here, but look what I look what we do here. I really like this play. Because Groudon, we need, the, we need to save the Groudon to deal with a couple of the Mons in the back. And we already know that we're going to be able to outspeed their Groudon if, we, if they have it in the back so i think switching in sin here it's gonna be a really really good play it'll block the venusaur go i i thought they were gonna go for like an earth power or something weak into the groudon and just a big damage in our zard and then we'd be able to have like a fake out pin zashian to win the game that's kind of what i was planning and we're also just letting the wildfire tick but we proc the defiant that sucks um they go for a sleep powder it does not work we are alum berry we do be taking these berries they read the switch in there or they just wanted to finish it off and get a plus one either way and sin does not die we get a citrus proc we airstream the Venusaur, just because I want the Venusaur gone, because I can only really stop that. I can only use the Lumberry once. And then now, you're at 15%, right? And you have to send out your Groudon or your Zern. It should be Groudon, right? There's still Wildfire ticking, which means, like, you could protect here, but, like, the whole point was to make the Wildfire do the work. That was the whole point, was to make Wild... Like, we had the Thunby pinned by switching in the Incin in that situation. So, uh, yep, that's pretty much it. And uh, there's still one more turn of Sun. Big Blast Burn, win the game. So pretty good stuff. Uh, we won every game that we played. We won literally every single game that we played. And uh, I just think this team's absolutely amazing. And so remember, this is not a team comp that I theory crafted. I went and saw what other people were using and I thought of ways that I would want to play it. And then I made it work with my play style. I play this in Sin a little bit faster. 
I don't use the Grim nearly as much as I think all the other pro players. I use the Zard a lot more, and my team is built a lot more around the Zard, pulling attention away from Groudon, so Groudon can get the Sword Stance, so then Groudon can just do big AoE attacks while we save our Zacian in the very back to clean up late game. So it's a very different way to play it. I wouldn't say it's like the biggest brain thing in the world, but I do think now, if I were to play against this team, I'd understand a little bit more about what makes it tick so I could pin it in those situations.